Hello everybody, my name is Henry Tenby and welcome to this edition of Model Moment. We're going to be doing a different version of the show today. We're going to be covering a topic as opposed to a particular model or maker. Although we're going to be using Verkyle as the roundabout point for the topic. So today's topic is a question that I've received quite often from many viewers, and that is, at what point does a collector decide uh, that he or she wants to refinish a model or not refinish a model and keep it in its original condition? So there's certainly a number of factors that are involved and they are in each a, a very specific uh, set of considerations come into play. And I'm gonna go over all of those factors in this video, and I hope you will enjoy this journey with me. But first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, we have a little over 200 people watching these videos now, which is great, thank you so much. I appreciate all the comments that you care to leave. Uh, there is a comment section below, so do leave your comments. I look forward to reading them and I respond to all comments personally. So that's awesome. If you would take a moment to leave your comments, I really look forward to seeing them. Also, as we all know, there is a little red subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. And if you click on that button, you will receive a notification from YouTube on your devices and computers and emails that I am publishing a new video. So if you haven't already done so, please do click on the red subscribe button so that you are kept up to date as to when I'm publishing all my new videos here on YouTube. So now that we've got that order of business out of the way, we'll get to the meat and potatoes of this video. Why and when does one convert a model that's been painted many years or decades in the past to a new livery and bring it up to standards with new paints and finishes? Why does one do it? When does one do it? Well, Look what I have in front of me. These are all Verkyle F28. So the, the manufacturer that we're gonna be using to illustrate this topic is none other than Verkyle. Uh, for those of you that are not aware, uh, Matthias Verkyle, although he's no longer alive, he was a master producer of aircraft display models. Back in the 1950s, he started his business in Amsterdam and he remained active up until, I believe, well into the 1990s and his models are legendary. Collectors all over the world love his models because they are, in most cases, metal. They are metal, you can hear the ring, and they are very accurate, and he finished them to a very high standard, and he produced, naturally, being from the Netherlands, a lot of the models, if not all of the models, for the Dutch aircraft builder, Anthony Fokker, and their F-27s and F-28s, and later F-50, and F-100 models and F-70 models were all stemmed uh, from productions that were uh, conceived by Verkyle. So this was the Verkyle staple. It's a 172nd metal F-28, and it is in the livery of, uh, it's in the Fokker House livery. This livery, I believe, dates to about 1971, 72 and the aircraft registration is PHMOL, which was the Fokker demonstrator. And as you can see, on this table alone, I have three of them, plus I've got another two behind me. So I actually own five of these models, and we know with a fair degree of certainty that hundreds of these models were actually produced. I venture to say possibly even thousands, Fokker used these models as giveaways, as promotional give giveaways to the airlines, to the potential airline customers, uh, so that they might uh, order these models, uh, I should say order the real aircraft, and the models were um, used as an enticement back in the day. And they came in various scales. This is the 172nd scale, and this here is a 1 100th scale, F-28, also produced in huge quantities, and you can see the difference in scale between 1 72nd and 1 100th. Uh, often the 1 100th scale models are in various generic liveries, uh, I'll call them house liveries, and they were perhaps not as common as the larger models, but they, they're, they're typically inexpensive. Uh, you sh as a collector, if you want one of these models, you really shouldn't have to pay more than about 150 euros uh, for one of these, uh, 
the larger one, 150 to 200. The stand is worth a, a good portion as well because they are metal and often the stands become separated from the models. Like in my example here, I've got three of these models, no stands. So um, what's, the, what's the stand worth? In my opinion, the stands are worth 75 to $100. The models are worth about the same, 75 to $100. So maybe 150 to 200 if you can get it with the stand in the generic livery. And uh, I don't know, 150 kind of, uh, if it has the stand and it's the 1-100 scale model. So these are entry level models, but how many models does one want in the generic livery? Which brings us to the question of refinishing. These models will, will never appreciate significantly because of their numbers. There were so many of these models produced, they will always remain as a common model. And uh, certainly in the Netherlands and in Europe, they're really quite easy to find. They're on eBay uh, with a great regularity. And there are some punters that will try to put ridiculous prices on these models on eBay, like 400 euros. Uh, I don't subscribe to that, uh, but do beware. You don't want to pay 400 euros for one of these. That is completely over the top. And um, But if you can take one of these models and put it into a beautiful color scheme, in 30 years from now or 40 years from now, collectors will probably not care that it's been refinished because it'll be in an airline livery that's different than the Fokker house livery. And if the model's refinished to a very high standard, it really won't matter, in my opinion. The collectors will value it pretty much just as highly as a, an original Verkyle. So let me talk about what's possible. Uh, I myself, when I refinish a model, like to use the liveries that were original to the models when they were produced by the manufacturer back in the day. So how do you do that? Well, there are a number of collectors and means and avenues of getting the original decals. These are original Verkyle decal sheets that I have collected. And as I say, there are collectors that at the shows in Europe that have, that have these. I have a number of them and they're generally not expensive. Uh, you have to be careful when using these decals because they are 50 years old. Uh, you can't just pump them in the water and hope for the best results. They have to be treated and protected. So you want to use a micro, um, a microset solution decal restore over the decal portion of the decals uh, to protect them because these are so brittle in many cases if you put them in the water and you're rough with them they'll just shred into a million pieces and they'll be useless so you have to put some form of decal restoration uh, coating on these before you use them but look at this decal this is this is Bonanza Airlines uh, Fokker 28 Bonanza of course never ordered I don't believe they ordered the aircraft, but I know the models were made in, for presentation um, for Bonanza, which was a US West Coast airline uh, back in the 1960s. So there's one option. Here's one that uh, is kind of nice. This is Upper, well, Air Volta, I guess from Upper Volta in Africa. This is their F-28 livery. So this deco was made for the 172nd F-28. Uh, it's a nice colorful livery and would look very, very cool. And again, these decals, well, this decal would be from the 70s. The Bonanza one I just showed you would be from the 1960s, probably mid 1960s or 1967 thereabouts. Now, what does one of these models look like as it moves through the process? Let me show you that. So I've taken uh, one, of, one of these orange models and I completely refinished it. I basically stripped it down removed all, sanded all the decals off, primered it, and have given it a complete, beautiful paint job using the color matches to Verkyle for the gray, um, white, silver intakes, um, the exhausts. And can anybody guess what airline this is going to be? You probably can't because even I didn't know who this airline was until I saw the decal sheet. But here's the model and here is the decal sheet. It's called Air Charter Nord. Uh, it's a Dutch company, and I'm going to be putting these decals onto this model. So this is how I strategized it. I have never actually seen these Air Charter Nord decals on a real Verkyle model. So we know they were done because this is the decals, 
and they're bloody rare. It's an extremely rare model. And for all intents and purposes, in 30 years, when this model is completely refinished and beautifully clear coated, uh, it's going to be, it, it's not the original Verkyle 100%, but it's as close as you can get to it because it's the original Verkyle model. It's been refinished and painted to Verkyle standards and it's been redeckled with the original Verkyle decals. So I'm going to call it a 90% original Verkyle. But again, 30 years from now, when somebody picks up this model and it's complete in the uh, Air uh, Charter Nord markings, it's going to value, in my opinion, very similar to what, if someone had one, the real Verkyle 100% authentic would be. And what's that number going to be? Well, today it's, it's several hundred dollars because, again, just the cost of the model and the stand is at least $200. The labor to uh, strip, sand, primer, multiple paints. Uh, we're talking again, one, two, three, there's five different colors here. Put the decals on, clear coat it. There's a couple, at least two to three hundred dollars of labor involved in that. So we're already at five hundred dollars. And that doesn't account for any markup on top of that. So realistically, it's a six to seven hundred dollar model by the time this comes out of my paint shop. And I believe that is a, a, a very significant improvement on having a tub full of these house livery models. But the F-28 is quite iconic. It's quite collectible. European collectors are very interested in the model. They like the model. It's popular. And the liveries that are uh, airline potential and airline customer liveries are much more valuable than these house models. So let me show you some more of what's possible in the F-28 range. So here we have an Iberia F-28. This is a, an original Verkyle model that I completely restored using the original Verkyle Iberia decals. I did this project about five years ago and these decals were brittle, super, super brittle and super fragile and very thin. But the model turned out absolutely stunning and gorgeous. It's on the original metal Verkyle F-28 stand. And look at that, isn't that very cool? So as you can see, this model, uh, in my view, it will value it in the several hundred dollar range. It has to, it has to, because again, the cost to acquire this is 200. The cost of restoration, my cost of restoration is in the three to four hundred dollar range. That takes us to five, easy. Then you've got shipping costs to get the model. And uh, before you're said and done, it's in the six to seven hundred dollar range. And I would not be selling this model for any less than that. And uh, again, they don't grow in trees. They're rare and collectors will always value, especially these European airline liveries. They are special and you just don't see them too often. And the Verkyle collectors uh, will appreciate that a model like this will be in this condition for the next 50 years. And it's something that can be enjoyed and put on the shelf and uh, future generations will be able to appreciate this model in all its mint condition splendor. And there you have it. I'll show you another example of an F-28 uh, that I restored a number of years in the past that is also a gorgeous piece. So what we have here in front of us is a Fuerza Aérea del Peru, Peruvian Air Force Fokker F-28. These are original Verkyle decals. This is an original Verkyle F-28 model on the original stand. And this was a house livery model that I put through a very, uh, very detailed restoration and brought it up to what I would consider a very collectible status. And on this particular model, it's made of metal. Look at the wing surface detail that I did on that. I did the complete mark out lines on the wings with the emergency exits. I love the Peruvian Air Force roundel. And then I'll just take this off the stand, show you the underside of that. Again, we've got the Peruvian Air Force roundel here. And I've put the Verkyle, original Verkyle decal with restoration date and my name on the underside and yeah you can hear that's metal and isn't that a didn't that turn out gorgeous i mean it air force peruvian air force is it's a simple scheme but it's a gorgeous scheme i like the tail detail is really cool uh, this is a model which i really like a lot it's super attractive 
And um, yeah, I mean, look at the gray, just beautiful, absolutely stunning. And lots of value there. And again, comparing the two, this model is worth at least triple what the house livery model is worth. So well worth putting the effort into it. It's a great investment. And again, a model like this, how often would you see one of these? In my entire collecting career, I've only seen this one. I've never seen another one. I'm sure there are collectors in the Netherlands that do have one of these, but uh, out here in Canada, this is just such a special model for me. And I'm uh, grateful to have it. I'm glad that I put the efforts into doing this restoration. And the clear coat, the real heavy clear coat, just really makes the livery pop. Isn't that cool? So we're now going to move our discussion to the Verkeil Hercules. The Hercules is another type that was produced in very large numbers by Verkeil in the 1960s and 1970s. Reason being, Verkeil had a contract for with Lockheed to produce giveaway models, promotional models for the C-130. So hundreds, if not thousands of these models were made for giveaway. And quite often they were produced in the livery of the United States Air Force. By the way, these are 172nd scale and the smaller Herc in the foreground is 1100 scale. So they, they did uh, at least these two scales in fairly large quantities. And I know they also did a larger scale 150th and that's a lot rarer. I have never seen one, but I know it exists in metal by Verkyle. So if you have one and you'd like to trade it or sell it, I'd certainly love to, to hear from you. My email is shown on the screen right now. And if you do have any models for sale or trade, I am a cash buyer. So don't hesitate to get in contact with me. So the Hercules models by Verkyle were often in the Lockheed house livery or in the U.S. Air Force livery. This particular U.S. Air Force livery is fairly rare because it dates from the 1960s, uh, Military Air Transport Service, MATS, but there were more common schemes, uh, U.S. Air Force camouflage, which aren't particularly appealing and they tend to show up and they're not an expensive model. So the liveries that are common could conceivably be refinished into rarer liveries. So that's what I'm gonna talk about now. What are one's options? So this is a Verkyle decal sheet of a Safair Charlie 130 or L100. Uh, these aircraft were in this color scheme in the 1970s. And we know because this is an original Verkyle sheet that Verkyle did produce the model in Safair livery. And look at this. I have the, here is the Pacific Western Airlines C-130 decals, and here's the actual real model. So we know for certainty, with certainty, that Pacific Western Airlines was on the receiving end of these models from Lockheed back in the, in the 1970s. PW took delivery of their last Hercules, HPW, CGHPW, in 1979, and that was an L-130 series, and about five years later, it was sold to Bob Engel of... NWT Air, and NWT Air operated this Hercules up until, I guess, maybe five or six years ago uh, when it was sold overseas, I believe, down to South Africa. And this Hercules was the only civilian registered Hercules in Canada for about 30 years, certainly, you know, all of the 80s, 90s, and 2000s until the first Air sold it. So, yeah, there you go. This is a real nice model. It's the pride of, uh, one of the pride of my uh, collection. And it's, a, look at the props, I love the props. They're made out of, looks like they're hard black plastic. So that's very, very cool. So this is what a model looks like that has been, uh, this is a C-130, uh, L-120 or C-130A model, short body, uh, similar to this one here. Whereas this Herc is an L-130, so it's a little bit longer. I don't know if you can, quite make out the, the difference, but this is the stretched hurt and this is the short hurt, standard sized hurt. And so I, I had a couple of these in metal and they're in the process of being refinished. So can anybody guess what color scheme the, this is going to be in? Well, I can show you because I've got the original Rakhile decals. It is going to be going into, ta-da! This is Pacific Western Airlines livery, but it's the livery from the 1960s. It's the livery before the blue livery. So 
This was the livery when the aircraft were first delivered in about maybe 66. And I'm putting this hurt into that livery. I think that's going to be very, very cool. I'm Canadian. I love Pacific Western Airlines. So for me, it was a natural for this. But you can see how I've set up the white, the white and the silver and the black nose to accept delivery of that Pacific Western Airlines decal. So what else is a possibility? Well, this is a, the same model, which I refinished. And it's in the process of going into Alaska Airlines livery. Alaska and a lot of the North Slope Alaskan operators of the 60s operated the C-130. Uh, the civilian version was designated the L-100. This is an L-120 and N-9227 Romeo. And these decals, these uh, golden nugget decals were done by Greg Drawbaugh of, Gra of, Draw De of Draw Decal. And he did a great job on these decals. So this model is in the process of being refinished. I've got, I still have to do the clear coat, but as you can see, it does look quite attractive in the Alaska Airlines Golden Nugget livery. So, but what other options would one have? Well, uh, there are a number of aftermarket decal makers that do produce Hercules decals. Uh, I do have another Hercules that's behind me on the shelves, and I bought these decals for it. These decals are Ethiopian, that's an L130. Decal, and that's going to be on that, well, you can't quite see it, but it's up there on the shelf behind me. So that's going into Ethiopian livery. So there are lots of options out there. And again, for the models that are super common, uh, it really is a good investment of one's time and effort to refinish them because you can create some good value for yourself. You can uh, expand the range of and appeal of your collection and you'll have an asset that I believe will appreciate in time. So the Hercules are a great series of models, the Verkyle Hercules, to consider for refinishing if they are not already in original airline uh, or military liveries from the 1960s and 70s. So that would be my advice as well as another airline model uh, for refinishing. I'll move on to our next candidate now. And this brings us to our next candidate that is suitable for refinishing, and that is the Verkyle Fokker F27 series. Now, before I get on with the presentation on the F27, this is my book. It's the Aircraft Display Model Collector, Investor, and Appraisal Guide. You might consider getting a copy for your, for your bookshelf and reading, because I do feature a very in-depth chapter all about Verkyle models several pages long that and it, we discuss the values of these models the models which are rare those models which are common and it's a very comprehensive uh, summary of the Verkyle production uh, during his entire model production career so you might check it out uh, if you're interested in more information on my, on my book or purchasing my book you can do so from my website henrytenby.com that's available on the click out and on screen now so you might give that some consideration as well. So the F-27, why would this model be worthy of refinishing? Well, it's the very similar story as the F-28. Thousands of these were produced in Fokker house livery, in the orange Fokker house livery. And they are not very valuable when they're in the orange livery. They were produced in such great numbers that they are readily available at pretty low cost. And if you want to have something special, you want to have a livery that is not the Fokker House livery. So what's possible? So uh, again, I'm going to show you some uh, decals, old original Verkyle decals that I have. This is Aviaco F27. That would be very cool. This is Tag Angola. Quite colorful, actually. And we have Wow, this is neat. This is an old decal sheet. This is uh, Malaysian Singapore Airlines F-27 MSA. It would date from about 1966. So imagine this decal is 55 uh, years old, uh, thereabouts, and it needs to be handled with kid gloves. You've got to be really careful when you apply a decal that's that old. And here we have uh, one of my favorites, PAL. 
Philippine Airlines. And this livery is actually going on this very model here. I'm preparing this model to accept these decals. And I think that's gonna look really, really cool. And the models that you see in front of us, uh, namely this one, this Mina Congo F27 right here, this was finished last year by me using a set of original Verkeil decals. I have never seen a picture of this actual aircraft. It has a registration TN ABZ Alpha Bravo Zulu. And I went onto the internet and I could not find Lena Congo in this livery and that registration. So I don't know if the airplane really existed or if this was a, a, a scheme that was presented only for sales purposes. I know that Lena Congo took delivery and operated F-27s, but it, the schemes that were presented on the internet were like from the 1970s. This is a, from the 1960s. So I've never seen anything like this before. If anybody has any information as to whether this scheme actually existed, please chime in and let me know because I'd love to hear. This is another model, which I refinished last year into Libyan Arab colors and uh, turned out really quite nice actually. Again, these models, I have only seen these one examples in my entire life of collecting display models. I have never seen another Libyan Arab Verkail F-27 model or a Mina Congo F-27 display model. So they are exceedingly rare. And in 30 years from now, uh, I believe collectors will say, okay, this model was refinished about uh, you know 30 years ago, but it's an original Verkail model. It's in the original Verkail decals but it was refinished uh, aftermarket by a fellow by the name of Henry Tenby, who was a passionate collector uh, back then. So there might be some collector interest in these models when I'm uh, many decades uh, uh, not, um, not around. So there you have it. That's kind of very cool. I like these models. I love the F-27. It's a very cool looking model. And the Verkiles were super accurate. I mean, look, look at that, look how accurate that is. I mean, isn't that neat? And uh, the models are just, in my opinion, begging to be put into a more interesting color scheme than the Fokker house livery. So what do you think? Uh, do you agree with me that certain models are worthy of refinishing and others aren't? Well, I'm now going to show you a model which is a good example of one that I feel is not worth refinishing. So let's move on to that. So which model is not worth restoring? The model that is not worth restoring is the model which has a lot of value, a lot of delivery remains intact, and there's only a small issue that can be corrected through repair. And the historic value of the model and everything else about it is such that you wouldn't want to disturb delivery for the sake of getting rid of the original and bringing in an entirely new finish when it's not necessary. The model in front of me is one example just like that. I don't know if you are observant through watching this on video to see what the difference is, but it is actually front and center in the camera. This engine right here uh, became, it broke off. It is metal, but it took a stress crack on the pylon and had broken off. And uh, when I bought the model, the, the seller, of course, you know, made this aware to me and he, the price was reflected in the fact that a repair was needed. So I uh, reattached the en engine, had to putty and prime and fill and primer the engine back on. And now uh, you probably can't, you might be able to see it. There, it's a very, I mean, this is 60, 55 year old paint on this model. This is a Verkeil DC850 in 1100 scale. It's a rare model because the DC850 was produced in very small numbers in 1100 scale by Verkeil. The, the DC830 produced in very large numbers. The, the, the 50, I've only seen one actually, and this is it, and I bought it. So I had the skill and the ability to make the repair and I, I masked up to and around the pylon above the wing there, and I matched the silver as best as I could. And there you have it. This model is 90% authentic, 10% repaired. But again, to the untrained or un, 
um, undiscriminating eye, it is largely a, an authentic model. This actually is the repair and it, it meshes in nicely and the model presents pretty much as it should circa 1965. The color scheme, yeah, KLM, it's a beautiful color scheme. This is the 1960s uh, scheme with the multiple bands on the tail seen at airports all around the world and the DC-8 is an iconic airliner. The, you know, these models you just cannot find in good condition like this. They do show up in beat up condition. They show up in condition that's worthy of being repaired. And even then when they do show up, they're expensive. Uh, I don't think you can touch these models for much less than three or 400 euros. And in good condition, they're, they're uh, several hundred euros for sure, just because of their rarity. But I really like this model. Uh, I may do some more minor touch-ups on some of the, the, you can't even see it, but there's, there's some minor chips on the cheat lines, which I might touch up a, a little bit, but the model overall just presents very, very nicely. And it's a model that I'm very happy to have in my collection. I really, really like this model and I hope you would agree that this is a model that one wouldn't want to refinish for those obvious reasons. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have comments, if you have refinished models, I'd like to hear what models you refinished and why you made the decision to refinish them. If you disagree with some of the points that I've made, that is absolutely perfect. That's fine and fair. And I'd love to hear your reasons for disagreement because this is an open forum and it's all about sharing our values and, and opinions and ideas with each other as we're all very serious collectors and we respect each other's views on, on these topics. So thank you very much for tuning in and I'll look forward to seeing everybody on the next edition of Model Moment. But before we end, I would just like to remind everybody that this is a beautiful color slide of an Air Canada Vickers Viscount. I'm also a collector of aircraft slides. So if you have a collection of Kodachrome or slides, especially old slides from the 1960s, I am a cash buyer. I'm keen to buy your collections. So do send me a message. My email's on the screen right now and I would love to hear from you. So thank you very much for that. Wishing everybody happy collecting, have fun, stay safe, and we'll see everybody on the next edition of Model Moment.